So now that the neck has been fit to the body, the neck will go on and be fine shaped, the final shaping, the carving of the diamond. With the body, however, the, the uh, areas of uh, binding and, and the lip of the sound hole are going to be fine sanded and prepared for lacquering. Uh, after this job is done, masking tape will be applied to the areas of the body that we don't want lacquer to, to adhere to. For example, the, the patch underneath the bridge, as well as the areas where the neck will be glued in. One of the most beautiful aspects of the guitar, in my opinion, is the uh, diamond volute, or dart, on the back of uh, D28s, D45s. Uh, this does not appear on the D35 or the D18. It's actually a remnant of um, uh, guitars from the 1830s that had a dovetailed headstock. And by that I mean that the headstock and the neck shaft were two separate pieces of wood that slipped together and had a little byproduct or leftover piece, which was this little dart. When, when we went to uh, using solid mahogany for the necks, uh, we wanted to maintain this feature because it's, uh, it's just a beautiful and, and uh, trademark feature of Martin Guitars. So this feature has to be hand filed and, and carved using paring knives and, and files and scrapers, and that's what's happening here. In the background, you can see the application of the filler which looks a lot like paint at this point. Uh, it got, it's brushed on, it's allowed to dry to a leathery consistency, and then it's forced into the grain using buffing bonnets. Um, the filler will then be wiped clean, leaving a residue in the pores only. And what this does is prevent lacquer from seeping into the guitar like a sponge, and provides a very smooth, even surface for, for us to uh, to build a, a beautiful lacquer finish upon. Uh, one problem with the filler, though, is that it stains the bindings. So after the filler has been applied, the bodies have to come over to this area and be hand scraped back to their clean white color. We used to do this job with a pretty conventional drill press. Uh, this is the, the drilling of the tuning machines, which is a really critical aspect. Everything has to be just perfect. So now we have a, a, a much better tool, which is an automatic drill, which uh, knows the exact location and, and drills uh, a stepped drill perfectly every time. Now that the guitars have been filled, sealed, drilled for their tuning machines, then the decal logo can go on and uh, the steps of the lacquering process can proceed. So this, uh, I'm really proud of this. This is uh, one of the Eric Clapton prototypes we're making out of Madagascar rosewood. This is the first time I've seen it. It's just beautiful. The Madagascar rosewood looks uh, very much like Brazilian rosewood and has much of the tonal properties that Brazilian is prized for. Uh, so these have been through lacquering, they've been through polishing, and now the uh, fingerboard and, and uh, fingerboard surface is being cleaned and the dovetail area is being re-exposed so that it can be final fit to its body prior to glue up. Also the tuning machines will be installed in this area. This is a lacquering schedule. Uh, the lacquering schedule is very complicated, and we have many different lacquering uh, procedures. 
But in, in a nutshell, we first are going to apply stain, if there's any staining to be done, then a vinyl seal coat, then a filler coat, and then a second vinyl sealer coat to sandwich in the filler. After which we do a light scuffing of the guitar, followed by three coats of lacquer, a sanding, three coats of lacquer, a sanding, final, final touch up with a brush, final spray coats of lacquer, followed by a final sanding and final polishing. It's a very complicated and timely, time consuming process but it does yield a finish that is probably, arguably, the finest woodworking finish in the world. This guitar has had almost six coats of lacquer on it already, plus the sealer coats. You, you, uh, you can still see a little bit of pores if you look very carefully into the reflection. So this is going into its, uh, I believe, its second sanding, after which it'll be uh, inspected, dropped in with lacquer, and resprayed as necessary to get the, the finish perfectly smooth. So basically they're building lacquer up, knocking it down, building it up, knocking it down until they have an extremely thin coating of lacquer that is perfectly smooth. We want the lacquer to be thin so that it doesn't interfere with the tone. Guitars that have thick finishes, and that is very commonplace, really inhibit the sound of the instrument. Because we have such a long heritage of hand craftsmanship, we're always a little skeptical of, of new technologies, but where it makes sense um, for, for, for a new technology to really work or, or to improve the product, we try to be open-minded, and, and uh, this is one of our biggest open-minded projects. Uh, this is uh, the polishing robot, and it actually does an incredible job. The problem is that lacquer is is about twice the thickness of a human hair. And when you bear down with a polishing pad onto the surface of the lacquer, it's very easy to burn right through it, right down to the raw wood, and require the entire refinishing of the guitar, which is very costly um, and unnecessary. So the nice thing about the robot is that, that uh, we've been able to uh, uh, digitize this process this is a pressure sensitive uh, uh, wheel that works in, in relation to the robot and exerts the exact, exact right amount of pressure. It's a repeatable process over and over again so that we don't run into uh, the problems that we ran into with inconsistency and burn throughs uh, doing this by hand. Uh, so the robot uh, also uh, obeys, obeys us and does what we tell them to do or her, we're not sure if it's a male or a female. The robot helps us get rid of the, or the orange peel or pebbliness to the finish. There's still a considerable amount of hand polishing that needs to be done to achieve the fine gloss using lamb's wool buffing bonnets and a polishing compound. You go over every guitar and just make sure that the finish is perfect. High gloss, no scratches. So this is a pearl inlay department, and uh, um, this is where the, the D41s and the D42s and the D45s and all, a lot of custom pearl inlay is done. Um, it's, a, it's, it's quite a skilled job and quite time consuming. Um, on a D45, the area around the tongue of the fingerboard has to be excavated uh, after the neck is fit. It's, uh, it's, the trough is cut. Pieces are inlaid and mitered. It's, it's, a, it's a very exacting job. The pearl pieces have some curvature to them, and that makes uh, her job a little easier. Esther's been here for a couple of years. How many years? 34 years. Three years before me.
So here the neck and the body have been uh, matched up for a final fit. The final fit is also like the rough fit. It's critical to the playability of the guitar. We want a nice clean uh, glue joint and we, we, we rely on a perfect pitch of the neck so that the bridge height is exactly right for great playability. This is a fit without glue. After, a, after checking this and making, sh making sure it's perfect, she'll go in and apply glue and do the final glue up. Like so. And this is quite a guitar. This is a, one of the, the Doobie 42s. Doobie Brothers uh, limited edition. Beautiful herringbone pearl around the perimeter of the top. So after the neck has been glued to the body, then the bridge can be glue, uh, glued, located and glued for the first time. That's what's happening here. Using a special gluing call uh, that exerts pressure on the bridge in four spots. The bridge is secured, tightened up and, and allowed to dry. So this is really the last step uh, prior to stringing the guitar up. So we're in the final assembly department here. This is where the guitar is, uh, is strung up. You can see that we have a protective cover to prevent any dents and scratches to the top of the guitar. Um, stringing and also cutting of the, of the uh, slots in the nut to set the, the action uh, uh, of the strings at the nut as well as the action of, of the strings here at the saddle. These are all critical to the, the playability and feel of the guitar. After all this is done, we'll also set the pick guard into place. And, um, and then, it, then the guitar will go into the warehouse for a minimum of eight days, where everything adjusts and settles in. Uh, after which, the guitar is reinspected one more time to knock the action back down and get it perfect, perfect playability so that when it arrives at the store, it's in tune and ready to play. So naturally, in final inspection, we need uh, all of our guitar players in this area. This is where it really counts. So uh, it's a prerequisite. If you want to work back here, you've got to play guitar. But we've got some really good guitar players. George is uh, a student of the blues and, and a great fingerstyle player. <laughs>